Hey, what's up, everybody? BDO44 coming at you with another video. All right, so we're talking about Chicago and Milwaukee, and this is a situation where you got two very different circumstances on either side. On Chicago side, you got players coming back, becoming more healthy with every game. Players who've been out, like Patrick Williams and Alex Caruso, every time they hit the floor at this point, it's better for them because they're getting in better and better condition. On the other hand, you got Milwaukee, which is a very top heavy team team that has three max contracts as we've discussed and because of it their bench players are some are you know more or less lesser guys you know guys who don't make as much guys who are not expected to do as much um and when you take one of those top players out of that situation now you find yourself missing significantly more than maybe someone else who's missing a star like say phoenix you know they remove devin booker yes yeah, is it a bad situation for sure but they have plenty of players in instead that are quality players in the NBA that you know can be starters on other situations and produce very high. Milwaukee, that's a questionable thing for them at this point. You know, their best bench player at this point is Bobby Portis, and Bobby's also banged up for this one. I'm not sure if he's going to be going. So with Middleton out for the next several weeks, that puts him in a situation where he's officially out for the series. Uh, and I don't like that for Milwaukee. Now, obviously... I respect everybody who says, you know, is Giannis still there? <laughs> yes. All right, then. I respect all of y'all. Part of what you're saying makes sense to me, for sure, because Giannis is there. So he should be able to just score 50, grab about 15 boards, block about four shots, and will his team to victory. But the problem is Chicago plays defense, man. <laughs> like, they're, they're not the best defensive team, but – you do have to deal with defensive players when you're dealing with them. And with you removing Middleton from the equation, that makes things much easier on Chicago to crowd Giannis. And most importantly, it removes a great deal of spacing from the floor from the Milwaukee Bucks. Now, they still have a few players who can hit some three-point shots and some mid-range jumpers, but nothing like someone like Middleton that you have to track at all times. Someone who could basically pull up from anywhere Kobe pulls up from <laughs> and hit the shot. So you have to understand that Middleton being removed from the situation, not only it's bad for the Bucks because they don't have a whole lot of talent behind him, but it's bad because now Giannis, even though his jump shot has gotten significantly better, in theory should not be relied upon to hit jumpers consistently. And because of that theory, there's really no way of knowing what to expect from the Milwaukee Bucks. If his jumper falls tonight um, and he's able to continue doing the things that he normally does, facilitating and all that, and they find that spacing somehow, uh, maybe someone, up, someone else steps up and is a huge threat, then you can have yourself a situation where Milwaukee, being a good road team, uh, could still come out of here with a very nice victory. Uh, at the end of the day, this is the champs. And I think that they are very much expected to find ways of competing, even when they're undermanned. Um, but I personally think that they're best when they run their offense through Middleton. And so I have my questions about this year's team, if they still have some of those issues as last year's team. In my mind's eye, they would have even more because they have lesser talent. You look up, they don't have P.J. Tucker anymore. He's with Miami. So, you know, that's one of the main pieces in this series that I'd say, okay, if Middleton goes down, at least I can look on look it over there at him and say, okay, those intangibles, yeah, he can give me some of that. Missing Bobby Portis would really, really hurt also. But, again, feel a lot better if P.J. Tucker's giving me a good 38 minutes, 40 minutes in a game like this. That would help Milwaukee. So I look at the situation. I'm looking at Grayson Allen. I'm looking at Pat Connaughton. I'm looking at Jordan Wara. Those guys got the ball tonight. I don't know which one the coach is going to call on. I don't, you know, but with Portis being potentially out or at least hobbled, Middleton now not being a part of the lineup, it's on those guys to ball out. You know what I mean? Stay out of foul trouble. So uh, that's that's what it is. <laughs> it's going to be more Grayson Allen on the floor where he hurt Alex Caruso. So that brings an entirely different part of the conversation to the equation. And that is, how is the city of Chicago, or rather the 
the United Center going to react to Grayson Allen being on the floor even more so than he was expected to be in the first place just off of sheer necessity for <laughs> having him out, you know, having him out there. So at this point, he's somebody who could play well in this game. Don't get it twisted. I've never said Grayson couldn't play. He could score, and he's going to need to. You know what I mean? Him having a huge game would be paramount for this team at this point, um, depending on if they use him. Now, I don't know, you know, their rotation situation. Obviously, I'm a Laker fan, so my Milwaukee understanding is but so much. But judging from what I've seen, if they don't call his number, it would be a massive mistake. Massive mistake. Um, so, now, uh, Brook Lopez, a very important player in this game. Obviously, somebody you can expect to stretch the floor. Obviously, somebody who can get some easy buckets. Not somebody you expect to rebound the ball very well. You just understand that. Everybody knows that. He's important, man. He's going to have to do what it is that he does a whole lot more for the rest of the series. It's going to have to be a menacing terror. And that's what he is. He's a dominant force. And I've never seen a center on my team, the Lakers, get hotter from three than him. I, I've never seen that. If you want to call LeBron James a center, Anthony Davis a center, go for it. He's He gets hot, man. That's all I got to say. He gets hot. And if he can have one of those games where he strings together four, or five, six threes in a game like this, that would be massive in helping them get a stranglehold on the series without Middleton. You don't want to start dropping games in the series, Milwaukee. I understand that it might not be within your control based on how matchups now look. Because DeMar DeRozan is going to be coming at you. You know, obviously, Caruso is going to continue to play great defense. Zach Levine is now finding his niche in this lineup, which has been much talked about how he's kind of been out of sorts. He found himself in a good position to find his way in this last game. If he could stay within that lane, uh, he's going to help this team tremendously. Um, Vucevic also has been having a pretty good series from what I understand. Even though I'm not a big fan of his style on this team, ultimately he could still give you a great deal of scoring and rebounding at a high clip. Uh, this is an all-star here that we're talking about, and he is very much a dangerous, dangerous player at any given moment. And so... Do I expect him to have some massive game? No. Is he capable of having a massive game? Yes. And so I'll just leave that out there. One of these day, one of these games, some random game, he's going to have a huge game. Vucevic is going to have a big game. I'm just going to leave that out there. So um, DeMar DeRozan, obviously, he's going to have a big game every game. At this point, he's a threat to go for 50. <laughs> no, no exaggeration at all. He's a threat to go for 50. And the rhythm he's in, <clears throat> tumble with a, a type of, uh, you know, game work that he's put into his game in the mid-range over the years. Um, I don't think there are too many be better at that. He's a mid-range monster, and uh, he's going to continue to attack, you know. He's going to attack. He's going to put up scoring, uh, and the Chicago Bulls should run up the score. Now, teams have had issues scoring the ball, which has kind of been kind of weird to me. Um and I wonder if that's going to be the case tonight. Even though on paper, you can see situations where the Chicago Bulls should be able to run the score up. Um, I don't know. It's, it's kind of weird. The NBA can be kind of weird at times. I would not at all be surprised to see the opposite. For whatever that's worth. Whatever. But either way, when you're talking about these two teams, bottom line is physicality is going to be on, the, on display tonight. I expect people to get pushed all around. Giannis is going to be in the paint repeatedly especially since he's going to have the ball in his hands even more. His facilitating is going to be very important. Guys are going to have to knock down shots without Middleton. There's, that's a lot of points and a lot of efficiency that you're going to have to make up somewhere. And with him not in the lineup, I'd imagine it's just going to mess things up. So they're going to have to adjust. And I just don't like that aspect of things tonight for the Bucks. So all things considered, as I look at this, it's, it's either Giannis goes completely nuts and plays under control, plays smart, um, and doesn't jack up bad shots. Or Chicago should have every opportunity to start winning games in the series. I'm just going to be honest with you. The tide should turn on this series right now unless Giannis explodes and wills it otherwise. 
Because even though he's he can be average, he, average for him is like 35 points, 15 rebounds. But he can give you his normal stuff right now. And if the other guys don't give him more than minimal effort, it's not going to be enough. <laughs> he's going to still be himself. But he ain't going to put up enough points. So that's what I'm concerned about at this point. Can Milwaukee get enough scoring from everyone else? Drew Holiday, can you step up and show us who you are and, you know, carve this team up? Put some scoring up. That's what's going to need to be happening. I know that a lot is, 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 is on him to defend people, and believe me, his assignments in this series are not minor, not by any stretch of the imagination. He has to guard some very, very tough people, and he has tough people guarding him. Um, but they're going to have to find scoring. Even if, it, even if it means pulling a LeBron and, and pulling the pedal off the metal for some, from defense here and there, it might be necessary because <laughs> you're going to need to score against this Chicago team. I just, I, I really believe that. I really believe that. I think about a guy like uh, Kobe White and the opportunities he should potentially have if given, uh, you know, minutes. I think about Ayo DeSumo and how he's probably itching to get in these playoffs, judging by how his style of play and the type of player that he seems to be. I look at guys like Bones Highland and, and Jalen Brunson, and they're all making names for themselves. Io wants to do so for sure, and I think he would do that if given opportunities on both ends of the floor. So calling his number would be a good thing, I think, uh, especially at home. So, yeah, United Center, center should be jumping. Chicago, stand up. This is a big night for y'all. This is a playoff game in Chicago. I know how excited y'all are. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm just looking at the situation. I think your future is bright. Patrick Williams is getting healthier by the second, and that is a big deal because he has a big game. And I don't think most people know that. But he's also somebody who can start making a name for themselves in these playoffs and truly define who he is. And if he starts flexing and turning into the Patrick Williams that's in there, that we know is in there, uh, he could he could change tide for this situation himself, um, you know. When you're talking about players like that, it's funny because you look at these guys and and some of them are lottery picks and it's like ah, you know they kind of rock into the role that you know them to be in. It's like you rock to sleep and understand who they are. You forget Patrick Williams was drafted two years ago, and he was like a top five draft pick. Like this is <laughs> he's a problem problem. And so yeah, tonight's a night where I expect him to pretty much show that. I'm definitely looking at Patrick Williams to flex tonight. He's at home. It's a playoff game. No Middleton, so it means it's one less thing he has to kind of worry about defensively. If his shot is falling, I expect him to put up some points. So, yeah, that is a player I like a lot, a whole lot. And I, and I think with him getting healthier, if the Bulls continue to, to, to move on, let's say they somehow get out of this round, he's going to continue to be more and more of a problem as these bulls continue to push on and i'm not gonna lie to you middleton being out of this series and looking at demar DeRozan, that i would be concerned if i'm honest because you got to deal with that dude like this is not a minor situation you're going to have to be efficient Giannis, because demar is going to be efficient he's coming and he's got plenty of people who are going to take pressure off of him defensively and plenty of people are going to do a lot of other things as well to make his life easier. I like Chicago like <laughs> for the series. I'm telling you, I like them. So it's up to Giannis, straight up. I'm not going to, I'm not going to switch my pick. Like I always say, this is how I move. I await being wrong. My pick was Milwaukee. I believe it was in, hell, I don't think I gave Chicago a game. I don't think I did. So that's already busted. But, um, We'll see. You know, we'll see how they manage this this situation. We'll we'll see how they manage going home. Um, you know, there's still room for improvement in regards to the Chicago team. They can still get better at some things. And Milwaukee has won the championship. They still have players down there that can can have massive games. But their strategy is going to have to change, and they are very much thin back there. So that's what I got to say, man. Everybody enjoy the game. My name is BDF44. Thank you all for watching. I'm out.